Welcome to the Expat Talk, a podcast for all expats who live or want to live in the Netherlands. In each episode, we invite an expat to share his or her experiences on living in the Netherlands. We talk about the Dutch culture and discuss typical Dutch things which might seem strange or crazy to outsiders. In each episode, we focus on a topic using true or false statements. In this episode, we talk about money, a risky topic if you ask the Dutchies. But we're going to break the boundaries and tell you what you have to know, do or not to do. Yes, the first one, the first episode of the Expats Talks. In this episode, we will take on the subject money and the Dutch. There are many stereotypes about the Dutch on this subject. Um, Dutch are always cost savvy, always looking for a good bargain, is what they say, or even greedy. And today's guest is Gulce. Welcome. Welcome to be here. Wow, okay, I mean, nice to be here. But I got really excited when you started to introduce the topic all about money and expat life. So this is something I'm so pumped to talk about today. So excited to be here. Nice. I, I always, when people, get, people get, get enthusiastic about money, I always think of the song, it's not about the money, money, money. But it is actually right now. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. So let's get in it. Tell, tell me something about yourself. What, what, what do you do on a daily basis? Where are you from? And why did you come to the Netherlands at all? Yeah, wonderful question. So I'm Gulce. Nice to meet you. I'm originally from Izmir, Turkey. Mm -hmm. And I've been living now in the Netherlands for well over 10 years. I relocated here first with my parents because of their jobs. So we mm -hmm. moved here as, let's say, highly skilled migrants, which mm -hmm. I think a lot of the listeners could relate to because I know a lot of them come here under that status. So right. I came here with my parents and then at some point they retired and they moved back to Turkey. So they're living the... Uh, pensioner's dream life, I mm. guess you could say. <laughs> and then I'm here now working as a former architect. So that's kind of what I used to do officially. And now I'm a full-time entrepreneur and a digital creator on YouTube with my channel Making It in Holland. Well, that already sounds really Dutch if you ask me, because it's all about entrepreneurship as well, right? Yep. Uh, great. I mean, great, great. So, and 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 uh, I mean, what, what eventually... It made you choose, you know, living in the Netherlands, except of just going back with your parents? Yeah, that's a good question. I think at some point growing up here, most of my teenage years and really getting used to the system and getting used to finding my way around, at some point it started to feel like my, almost like my first home instead of my right, second right. home because it's been such a long time spent here. And then over the years, I met other expats who are still here and other friends of mine who are from the Netherlands. And then it started to feel like this is really a place where I want to stay as long as I can. And also this whole uh, scenery with, you know, entrepreneurs in mm -hmm. big cities like Rotterdam and Amsterdam yep. makes it very, very interesting for me to stay here because I also did my master's in Eindhoven. Oh, wow. All right. right and Eindhoven right. is ca kind of like the Sprainport area in the south. So a lot of entrepreneurs there yep. as well. So that's very, you know, interesting and attractive for me. So yep. that's why I'm here. Did Philips already give you a contract or not? No, not yet. <laughs> but a lot of people I know have contracts yeah, yeah, yeah. from I, Philips. I actually know a lot of expats who come to, to, to Eindhoven, do their masters there over there and just get a get a contract instantly almost, right? Yeah, that's the yeah. kind of how it goes. I yeah, guess. right, right, right. <laughs> So, and um, if we look at your first impression of Holland, comparing it to right now, what's, what's the biggest difference for you? Yeah, that's so interesting to ask because now I lived here for so long. I How feel long like, actually? Uh, since beginning of 2005. So right, it's actually right. well over 10 years. Yeah. But in between, I studied abroad and then I came back. So there has been a little bit of on and off. Mm -hmm. So with that reduced, it's about 10 years. And uh, when I think about that... I'm trying to imagine like what I was like when I moved here because I was just about to become a teenager, obviously. And, you know, when you're going through all, the, all your teenage difficulties, you're too focused right. on like, who the heck am I yeah. or like what's <laughs> happening with me? Yeah. But one of the main things I guess I can say is that it's not what it looks like from the outside. 
So it's really different when you're here visiting like as a tourist or if yeah, you're here right. on your first year, the ideas you have and the things you find out are definitely a lot more different mm. than when you've been here for a very, very long time. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing you always, just like you said, you, maybe in the first year you kind of feel like a tourist, but then it slowly starts dripping in, you know. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. Cool, cool. Um Well, you know, talking about entrepreneurship, I also did some research uh, about you and found out you made a, make a lot of videos about expats in the Netherlands and, and which are, and you, you take on subjects which are not, uh, I mean, emotionally charged, but more like rationally charged. So we yeah. talk, you talk about a lot of different stuff. Can you tell me something about that, actually? Yeah, so when I started my channel, I really wanted to be this resource where expats, internationals, or anybody who is curious about the Netherlands can come to find information that's very practical, like how to move here, you know, yeah. um, how to save money like the Dutch, for example, and other things like how to find a job, or if you don't want to find a job, how do you start your own business? And I really wanted to be almost like a Google inside YouTube right. in video right. format in a very easy to understand, easy to digest way to give all these step-by-step -step, uh, sort of like what to do. Yeah. And now it's really growing and evolving into this community, which I'm very, very proud of. Yeah. But I guess my favorite topics to talk about are the ones all about finding jobs and negotiating money and saving money. So. <laughs> well, you're in the good place right now. That's <laughs> right. Cool. So Gulce, um, talking about the Netherlands and you moving over here, um, what was one of the things that maybe shocked you or, or thought you were, was really funny at first when you when you came over here? Yeah, actually, one of my earliest memories is a bit of an interesting one because my dad moved here a little bit before than my mom and I. So when we arrived at Schiphol Airport, he greeted us and he had these balloons with these animals, mm -hmm. which you can buy from a fl flower shop yeah, yeah, like, yeah, at Schiphol. Yeah. And to me, that was like an amazing first kind of uh, encounter. You know, when you're a little kid, you're like, wow, it's a balloon with flowers and it has toys in it. Yeah. That's amazing. So... <laughs> From that onwards, my impression was like this country is going to be quite playful, actually, that yeah. like these little things exist. And from there on onwards, you know, being kind of like more of a tourist and sort of like going around The Hague, which is where, where we were based at that time, we went to Maduradam. Mm -hmm. And my first impression was like, wow, this country is literally like one big toy. Oh, wow, and wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was just really fascinating for me to witness that. So yeah. um, seeing this kind of like playful angle to it, which I think not a lot of people have it as a first impression, but that was my first impression because I was like a little kid. And then, uh, you know, fast forward into my school years and then, you know, getting my first job as an architect. Um, the second kind of like major big impression was the Dutch directness, <laughs> which I'm sure, you know, has uh, a lot of uh, topics that, yeah. that get talked about. And then uh, over time, though, I realized that it's just a very objective way of stating your opinions. And you start to kind of like separate your emotions from what's being said but in the beginning it wasn't like that so this is for any expat listening that could be a little bit of a thing to get used to well i can tell you right now even for dutch dutch guys like me it's it's sometimes even hard as well yeah i hear you on that <laughs> you know i i we get this a lot though we get this a lot i i've, I've recently watched a video about flemings who said uh, they're either arrogant or very direct those dutch people And when, because I visited Turkey as well a couple of times, and whenever I go over there, I get this really warm kind of blanket pulled over me, and people are always, you know, really engaging and, and happy to see you. Whether in Holland, it feels, do, do you think it feels more like a kind of cold or distant or, or direct, like you said? Yeah, to be honest, um, there are pros and cons to both, because I think being too welcoming and too warm and not telling your opinion as you mean it is also a problem, because yeah. at the end of the day, like, you just get to the same outcome, but a lot uh, longer, yeah. which is something you probably <laughs> yeah. don't want to have. Yeah. So I wouldn't necessarily say that like being direct makes the Dutch look arrogant or cold or mm. anything like that. I think it just depends on the type of person you meet, right. regardless of where they come from, really. Yep. That's yeah. nice.
Gulcha, now it's time to test your knowledge of the Dutchies. We're going to ask you some typical Dutch things related to money. The only thing you have to say is true or false. Uh-oh, okay, I'm a bit scared, but let's do this. All right, number one. In the Netherlands, it's common to bring a present to a job interview. True or false? I would say false. Correct. Question number two. Dutch people always bring their own lunch to work. Okay. Um, generally, I would say true. Yes, we got a winner again, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and number three. Dutch guys are real gentlemen. The man pays everything on the first date. Okay, I'm very sorry to be giving this response, but I'm gonna go ahead with false. All right, I'm 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 not sure if I'm I want to I want to ask more questions about that. We're just gonna we're just gonna go with it, and you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, the Dutch are always looking for a bargain. Yeah, honestly, yes, but it's not just the Dutch; it's me as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we could say you've you've actually got the best of both worlds, right? Yeah. Yeah, about right. Yeah. <laughs> And number five, the bonus question, Holland and the Netherlands are synonyms. That's actually uh, false. It is. Great. Yeah, because a lot of people always say Holland as in, as in the country, but it's just two provinces in Holland. That's exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I get that a lot also in my channel because I called it making it in Holland yeah, because yeah. I just happen to be based in the Holland region, right? <laughs> so people always say to me, it's not Holland, it's the Netherlands. So for anybody listening, guys, I know it is the <laughs> Netherlands, Holland is a province, but it's just catchier to say making it in Holland than it making is, it right? in the it Netherlands. It is, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, they, there's, a, there's even a song called, uh, uh, which, uh, and, the, and the lyrics go, I'm from Holland, where the, you from? Exactly, yeah, there you go. So, <laughs> And it's not, I'm from the Netherlands, where you're from. Well, anyway, I'm happy we solved this right now over here. Great. And the sixth one, the bonus question, the last one about Dutch phrases. There are a lot of strange or funny phrases. What is your favorite Dutch phrase? Okay, the first thing that came to my mind was probably not the one I should be saying in a podcast. <laughs> but um, another one that I really, really love is, actually, I have two now. I love lekker, and I love how that gets uh, said within all sorts of different contexts. Yeah, yeah. Like, it could be about experiences, it could be about food. And I like that you could say lekker if you're feeling good about something yeah. almost all the time. So I always say that. And another one is um, knallen. Knollen, yeah. oh wow. That's, yeah. a, that's another one that just popped into my mind, but I'm also thinking um, another one that recently I was saying a lot at home for I don't know whatever reason is Shonge Yonge. <laughs> that's one of my favorites because I feel like it just sounds so cool. Yeah. And it doesn't really even sound that Dutch. Like it no. just rolls up your th tongue, <laughs> like has a lot of that like sh 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 sound. And um, I say that a lot when I'm uh, surprised about something and I'm like, what the heck are you doing? You know, like, oh, right. yonge, why oh. are you doing that? Oh, that's actually funny because I say shonge yonge a lot when, whenever something, you know, bumps me into my chest or something like that. If I, if I feel like shonge yonge, I don't feel like doing this. Yeah, I guess me on a similar level, but it's just more like this kind of like being shocked. Yeah, I guess being shocked in a negative way about something. Right, right, yeah. right. Okay, yeah. funny, funny. <laughs> well, it is refreshing to hear something something new instead of all the, the, the words we start with a G or with a K or stuff like that, right? Yeah, we hear yeah, a lot of that. Yeah, that's the first one that yeah. came to my mind. <laughs> we hear a lot of that in Holland as well. So kids grow up and stop using that word. So, Gulcha, do you have any advice for expats who want to live in, in, in the Netherlands? Is there something that they have to know? Yeah, of course. I really think that you should start with, you know, tuning into yourself and what do you want to get out of your experience moving to another country. So that could be the Netherlands, that could be another place. I think it's just all about understanding your own expectations and then do your research and due diligence based on that. So I think it would be quite naive for me to say, like, you must do this. Obviously, everybody comes from a different uh, situation, different background. But one thing I would say for sure, see if you're moving here because of your job, what kind of benefits you have from your job, how they can help you make your move a lot easier, especially if you're a highly skilled migrant. Or if you're moving from another EU country, see like what is the 
like the fastest, easiest way to do your relocation because obviously you don't need to worry about visas and, and stuff like that. And if you're from, uh, you know, non-EU countries moving here, I would say really look at the uh, ind.nl. So that's the Office for Neutralization and Immigration. This is a little bit technical, but really just check like all your requirements you need to have in place before you move here. Yep. So when you move here, you're not surprised by anything. So that would definitely be my number one tip to really do your research. <laughs> nice. So they also say that Dutchies love to, ba- to talk about saving money. Uh, they always say if you're in a bar and you don't know what to say to that nice person, just talk about being the beer being 20 cents cheaper over at the next bar. Or uh, they also say we don't get the idea of sharing. So when, when I you know, would have a bag of candy and would open it in front of us, that just means I just opened a, a bag of candy. It doesn't mean you can have some. So what's your take on that? Do you see that around you as well, in, 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 uh, you know, around friends and stuff like that in Holland? Yeah, you know, I do. Um, Not all my friends are like this, so I'm very lucky when it comes to that. But I do have one very, very interesting story. So I had a colleague of mine a while ago, and he would bring his own teas from home because he had this particular (laughs) tea that he just loved to drink, and they didn't have it at work. And basically what he would do is he would just have the same tea bag and he would use it throughout the whole day. Um, And then one day I asked him, why would you do that? He said that, well, it tastes the same. So I don't want to just waste (laughs) another tea bag every time I make a new cup of tea. So for me, that was like the like the height of, you know, seeing the frugal nature of the Dutch. But on the other <laughs> side, for example, I also have some friends that really love to splurge money yeah. when when we go out to bottles, for example, like they love to buy beer and they love to buy snacks and they're not so caught up on like how much everything's going to cost. But the catch here is a lot of them are Dutch, but they've lived in other countries for a very right. long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it's just people in disguise is basically that's yeah, what it is, right? Exactly. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> you know, what's actually kind of funny because there's a lot of stereotyping about, about you know, Dutch being savvy, cost savvy and stuff like that. But in a study done by the, by the Rabobank in 2020, uh, it showed that Dutch people from age 20 to 45 uh, basically on average did not save up more than 3,000 euros. Uh oh. Which is not a lot, right? Yeah, okay. Well, that definitely goes to show you that um, what you see occasionally or what you hear <laughs> doesn't always mean that that's what's actually happening. But I think a lot of the, you know what, actually, on this note, I also want to mention something here. Sure. So, not to make it sound like it's a plug, but there is a luxury store in the city center here mm-hmm. that has like all other sorts of luxury stores in it. Right. There's always the biggest queue in front of one of the main ones. So I guess when I now think about it, it makes sense why it's very hard for people to save money because there's always the longest queue out there and people are always like doing crazy amounts of shopping. Right, so. right, right, right. So, you know, you know the, the original question I wanted to ask you is, um, do you have recommendations about how to, sp- how to spend less money like the Dutch? But my question right now is going to be, can you tell the Dutch something about how to spend less money? Because we basically don't get it, I guess. Yeah, oh my goodness. I'm so disappointed to hear the statistics. I feel like... I as well. <laughs> yeah, I feel like now I don't know what to say. But I mean, if you take my word for it, which obviously coming from Turkey, I do really like to sometimes overspend, I have to admit. <laughs> but uh, now that I've become a lot more aware of where my money goes, I would say really have a budget plan. Yeah. So r- before your salary comes in, 25th or 26th of the month or whenever it arrives for you to really have an idea of, okay, how much are you spending for your living expenses? How much are you spending for food and other activities like hobbies, etc.? So really have that in plan and really set it. And yep. also after you've done that, pay yourself first. Set out yep. like a couple of hundred euros if you can uh, in, a, in an account where you like 
put it, forget it. You never see that amount of money, you know, consider it gone until that one time you might need it for an emergency or if you need to go back and reinvest it in something else like in the stock market or maybe buy real estate. I mean, that's all up to you really. Just do your <laughs> own research on that as well. So that would definitely be my like number one tip. Know your budget, know exactly where your money goes and exactly how much you're saving before you even get to spend anything. Right. This sounds really Dutch though. This is yeah, very Dutch. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. 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 It's funny hearing you talk about that because in Holland, we got a lot of applications which help you uh, get your money back or uh, you can sign up for, for fidelity cards at, for programs at shops and stuff like that to, to save up for a free cup of coffee after you pay 21 euros for 10 cups of coffee, right? And I always tend to think, is this the way they get us? Is this the way they use us? You know, hearing you talk in a kind of Dutch way, I'm, I'm holding up four fingers right now, um, uh, really makes me think, is it, is it just the way we, we live or is it just, you know, for, for you looking at, as an outsider, looking at us being like, oh yeah, cool, you got all these programs and apps like Tiki uh, to easily send money to your friends, but hey, yeah, you don't got the basics down, man. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, it's so nice to be able to say like, a couple of euros and some cents here and there because it definitely gives you this like dopamine hit because you're yeah, like yeah. yeah I'm saving money <laughs> this is awesome yeah. but I think in the long run it's just better to like look at the root of the problem before yeah. even if even becomes a problem to really save money up front so you don't have to feel this need to like save every single cent every single time you buy a coffee or you do shopping somewhere because I've also been there I have a royalty card basically from a couple of shops, including <laughs> Albertine, my bonus card, which is the one that probably gets me the most amount of discount, actually. Mm. But I think everything else, you just need to spend a lot of money yeah. before you even get anything in return. So I think that's a very unsustainable way of yeah. Uh, yeah. saving money. So, and do you think that the, you know, the, the, the general cost of living in Holland or you know, not, not even the living part you know, as an expat, but you know, just being able to have some fun, go out, buy some cool clothes, uh, meet up with friends. Do you think that's expensive compared to other countries in the world or maybe to Turkey? Yeah, I mean, compared to Turkey, for sure. But I think the main reason is because of the currency difference. Yeah. Um, one euro at the moment is something like uh, almost close to nine lira. So right. what you can get in you know, Turkey for the amount of money that you can get here is like, you know, 10 times different. Uh, but that aside, I would say it is definitely pricier than other southern countries. So I also lived in Italy for a while, for example. And I know that there you can also get great things for a lot less than you would hear. Um, and also in Portugal and in Spain, you can have, you know, similar exper experiences and end up paying a lot less for them. Mm. But I think the Netherlands is not as bad uh, when you think about, you know, a lot of the yeah, Scandinavian countries, especially. So it's kind of like somewhere in between, yeah. but it also depends on which city you're in. Yeah. So if you're in a big city like we are today in Rotterdam, yeah, I mean, expect to pay quite a lot for your services and for your products. And especially in Amsterdam, I don't even want to think about <laughs> the living costs there. I don't know what you think about that, but uh, yeah. basically it really depends where you live. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, altogether, Gulcia, we could say, um, I think you made a good choice coming to Holland. You're sitting here, you're smiling, so that's good, I guess, right? Yes, yeah. I'm very happy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there's a lot to do and uh, a lot to modulate as well in Holland. You could do basically everything you want. It does cost something, right? That's what we, what we all agree on. And I think that's a nice way to finish this first Expats Talks. Um, and I also, have, my last question for you is, what is your favorite way of saying bye in Dutch? My favorite <laughs> way of saying bye in Dutch is doei. <laughs> doei is a great one, yeah. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to Expats Talks. This is Mark, together with Gulce. From Making It in Holland, thank you so much for tuning in. Doei! Doei! Doei!